It was a season of unusual severity, the driest and hottest in Kansas as it was in Oklahoma since 1901. A pitiless sun burned up the corn and parched the native grass upon the prairies. Throughout this trying ordeal, our unfailing friend, the hardy and indomitable sorghum, stood sentinel upon the prairies with the patient fortitude inherent in its nature, born of centuries of hardship upon the desert. It bided its time and silently waited for rain, springing triumphantly into new life with the first downpour from the heavens. Excerpt taken from Sentinel Upon the Plains by J.B. Abrams. Sorghum is just one crop that can serve as an example from the benefits of plant breeding. Sorghum supplies numerous essential nutrients, including protein, the B vitamin, niacin, thiamine, and vitamin B6, and several dietary minerals, including iron and manganese. It is a very important food crop for both livestock and humans, especially in the developing world. Selective breeding can increase the amounts of these nutrients and minerals. Due to the potential effects from an increase in global average temperatures and decreased subsurface freshwater irrigation stocks, a potential threat to global food crops is just around the corner. Directed breeding from this crop can help it better withstand potentially wider swings in temperature climate norms, better deal with stresses associated with decreased available moisture during growing seasons, and thus feed more animals as well as humans. While some researchers believe the cultivation of sorghum commenced around 2000 BC, the the United States did not begin using the crop until Benjamin Franklin brought a broom corn variety from the Caribbean in 1725. Since then, human breeders have used simple genetic tools introduced by Gregory Mendel to improve the efficiency of the crop. Human plant breeders, who are often gardeners or farmers, combine two or more plants' genetic material into a new variety by various methods. More often than not, they are attempting to improve the plant's ability in a specific manner. Some breeders' efforts are monetarily rewarded by companies who see profit in the improvement, while other times, breeders do it for the pure enjoyment or the intellectual property title. Either way, some of these methods, such as the one introduced by Gregory Mendel, are simple to perform while others utilize some of the most advanced technologies available and require groups of scientists to successfully combine genetic material, such as map-based cloning of fertility restoration genes. Costs for introducing a successful new variety can cost millions of dollars. Breeding and cultivation of crops have become an important tool in helping to solve the current global food crisis cycle, which is expected to continue for the foreseeable future. But as with any new increased need, more human and monetary capital is needed to meet demand. Monet breeders of any plant need to have extensive knowledge and a persistent attitude. An answer to a question like, is this plant a beeline or an R line? Are not easily answered by the general public or even within the scientific community. Looking at the answer to such a question, we can extract what skill sets, training, and attributes are needed of a plant breeder. Taking an A-line and crossing it with the unknown. Taking these requires planning, planting dates, and growing them out so that they flower at the same time. Plant the resulting F1 and bag up the pistil portion of the plant. When the plant has matured, the bag is removed. If there is seed, you know the plant is an R-line, and if there is not any seed, then it is a B-line. By understanding how to perform this process successfully and understanding other processes, which can answer other questions like, is this plant an A-line or a B-line? A seed breeder can begin the process of creating a breeding nursery, either an AB pair nursery or R-line nursery. From these nurseries, new varieties can be created and then grown out and evaluated for environmental responses. As technology becomes cheaper, we can expect many crops to experience a growth in the number of new varieties. However, while technology can now isolate which genes are located in which parent, there will always be a need for plant breeders who are familiar with the plant to evaluate these new varieties and make or suggest changes. 